you finally learned how to make awesome edits in After Effects. All the effects look great and actually match, but there's one thing missing. All your videos seem to flop because your viewers skip during the intro and don't even wait to see the actual edit. Why am I so unlucky, you think? That's why it hits you. You look at other people's edits and realize that most of them have awesome text effects in the beginning to keep the viewers engaged. If only I knew how to make cool text effects like that. Well, don't worry, because today we'll show you step by step how you can make these 8 text effects to boost your edits to the top. And to prevent your viewers from skipping the edit while watching the intro. So let's not waste any time and get right into it. Now, for the sake of this tutorial, I prepared this example text to show you guys. And what we're going to do first is add some text effects, because you can see at the moment it doesn't really stand out and you can barely read it. And what we want to add for that is a deep glow effect. And to do that, we're going to go ahead to our effects and presets panel and search for deep glow. Drag it onto your layer. Well, what we want to do first is get rid of this black bar behind the text. So we're going to go ahead to our effects controls and enable this check mark that says required for text. Next, we're going to decrease the radius a bit. So I'm going to put it from 250 to 180 and the exposure as well. I'm going to put it from 1 to 0 0.6. Now still, you can't really see the text. So I'm going to go ahead and also add a drop shadow. So go ahead and search for drop shadow, drag it onto your layer. And this already looks a lot better, but let's adjust the settings. So we're going to put the opacity up to 100, distance to 10 and the softness to 30. As you can tell, the text already looks way better and now we're gonna add our animations and we're gonna start with the fading up animation but note that there's loads of variants to this animation preset which are all integrated into after effects but for this tutorial i'm gonna use the fade up words animation so we're gonna go ahead under our effects and presets panel and search for fade up words as you can see this animation preset will pop up and now we're just gonna drag it onto our clip and if you did everything correctly your text should now disappear we're gonna click onto our text layer and press u to bring up the keyframes and it should create two keyframes now the first one is gonna be at zero percent and the second one at 100 what these keyframes declare is basically the start and the finish of your animation meaning that at zero percent the animation is going to be zero percent done at 100 percent the animation is going to be fully completed so in order to now adjust them to your text we're going to have to drag these keyframes along and as i already explained earlier you want the keyframe with the value 100 to be at the place in time where your text is fully visible now you can just go ahead and drag it a bit to the front or the end depending on what you want for me this looks fine and if you now play your clip you can see that the text is slowly fading up now, as I already mentioned, there's loads of different variants to this animation preset. Just try around with them and see what fits the best. Now, for the next animation, we're going to do something pretty cool, which is this burn animation. As you can see, this looks awesome. And to do that, we're just going to go ahead and in After Effects, search for the CC burn film preset. Once you found that, you can just drag it onto your layer and it should show up in the effects control panel. Now, we want to set a keyframe for the burn effect and put it up to 100. As you can see, your text now disappeared. Now, go to the place and time where you want the animation to be finished and put the value from 100 back down to 0. This should automatically create a keyframe at that place and time. And if you now play your edit, you can see you have this cool fading up animation. Note that you can also do this the other way around and have your text fade out instead of fading in with this animation. And to do that, we're going to go to the place and time where we want our text to fade out, set a keyframe for the burn, leave it at zero and go to where we want it to be fully faded out. Now we're going to set the value to 100. And as you can see, if we now play our clip, the text is fully fading out. Now, once we've added our cool animation, it's time to bring some color into the game. And one of the best effects to add color is going to be a gradient ram, which basically is just going to make a gradient onto your text and make it stand out from the rest. And to add that in After Effects, just go to your effects and presets panel and search for gradient ramp. Once you found the right effect, we're going to drag it onto our text layer. And as you can see, it should be appearing right here. And now if you still have the text effects from earlier, we're going to have to make sure and drag it all the way to the top. So it's above the deep low effect. Now from here in the effects controls panel, you can search any color you want. And the start color is going to be the one at the top and the end color is going to be the one at the bottom. So let's say I want my text to be green. I will go ahead to the start color and instead of black, select green. Press OK. And as you can see on the top, you now have this greenish look. And by changing the start of ramp Y value, which is the second one, you can just increase or decrease the amount of green that it's going to have. Let's say you want a lot of green, you're going to put it up. And let's say you only want a little bit, you can put it all the way down. If you want it to be the other way around, just hit swap colors and you now have it at the bottom and now can increase or decrease the value again. In my opinion this is one of the most underrated text effects and also looks awesome so make sure that you implement it because using it at the right time can boost the quality of your edits to the top now the next one you don't want to miss this is the bevel effect and what it does it basically just gives your letters a nice white outline and make them look a bit more glossy which in my opinion looks awesome and shouldn't be missing in any of your edits now to add that effect to your text we're going to go ahead to our effects and presets panel and search for bevel make sure to select the one that's called rounded beveled now when applying this effect to your text layer you're going to notice that it's going to look a 
a bit trash so we're going to go ahead and drag it all the way to the top just like before with the radiant ramp and as you can see when you now zoom in you have this smooth bevel look which will stand out even more if we change the color of our text now when we put it to red for example you can see it really clearly this white effect here's a comparison to without it so my recommendation is to use this text effect even if it's just a little bit that it changes it will definitely stand out and make your viewers wonder on how you made this smooth look now if you want to you can also combine this bevel effect with the gradient ramp effect that we made earlier if you want to do that just make sure that the gradient ramp effect is actually over the bevel alpha effect now the next thing is going to be something awesome which is the strokes effect and loads of people always ask me how to do it but it's actually pretty forward so just follow along with me now to make these strokes you actually don't have to add any other effects we just have to go ahead and select our text that we want to put the strokes on for me i'm just gonna use this one word and when opening the character settings on the right you can see that you have lots of different settings but the only one we want for now are these two boxes now the first one is basically the fill color which is gonna be the color your text is in and the second one that has a hole in it is the stroke color as the name already says this is gonna define the color that your strokes have now for me i'm gonna choose red and if you now chose the right color for your strokes you might see that they are not appearing and to change that we have to set the value right here which is called set the stroke width and from here you can just because mine's currently at zero i'm gonna put it to six and as you can see you now have these strokes and once we've selected the fill color square and go ahead and click this little square at the bottom we're basically going to disable the color of it and as you can see you now have these strokes and depending on how thick you want them you can just increase or decrease the value that we set earlier for the stroke width i think six looks just fine so i'm just going to leave it at that now once we've added all the cool animations and made our text a bit more colorful it's now time to add some cool transitions in between our texts because when you make an edit it's probably not going to be the case that you just have one sentence but rather multiple and you obviously want to have some cool play within it and add some cool animations that will make your viewers eyes stay attached there's two cool animations that i want to show you and i'm going to start with this line that's moving between the rows of your text now as you can see for the sake of this tutorial i split my text into half and to now add one we're going to go to our pen tool and when selecting this pen tool we're going to go on to this little writing in blue that says fill click on it and select the one at the very left which says none now press ok press on to stroke and select normal press ok now we're going to zoom in a bit and roughly draw the line that we want as you can see we now have this line and to make it thicker you can just increase the stroke size right here you can make it thicker or thinner whatever you like i'll just leave it at 13 for now and now because we want our line to slowly get bigger we're going to go ahead onto our newly created shape layer which you can see right here and click this little extra window to open up the properties of this layer and we're going to click this little button you can see next to add and select trim paths now open that one as well and we now have these two values which are basically the only ones we need which is end at 100 and start at zero now to make it fade up we're going to click on this little clock to set a keyframe and put the value to zero where we want our animation to start obviously then go to where you want your animation to be finished let's say around here and put the value from 0 up to 100 as you can see this will automatically create a keyframe and now when you play your clip you can see that this line is slowly fading up now if you want it to be faster you can just drag the keyframe ahead and if you want it to be slower you can also drag it to the right i'm just going to make it a bit faster and to now make it fade out again we're going to need the start value set a keyframe leave it at 0 and go to where we want it to be fully faded out now at this place we're just going to do the opposite and increase the value to 100 and as you can see it's now fading out again once you follow these steps this just looks something like this and now last but not least because it looks kind of boring compared to the cool text effects on our text that we added earlier we're gonna add the same onto our shape layer so just go ahead to your text layer select both the effects then press ctrl and c to copy them and paste them onto the shape layer as you can see it now also has a deep glow and drop shadow on it and looks way better obviously you're gonna have to adjust the keyframes in order to fit your actual text because you have to keep in mind that every character speaks at a different pace and every sentence has a different length now the last and coolest animation in my opinion is gonna be this blurry text where you have another character fading up from the middle i got so many requests asking me to show how to do this so now i'm going to show you now to do this animation first of all we're going to have to add another text layer that we're going to have fade up in the middle and then we're going to go ahead to our original text layer that's going to be blurred out and duplicated by selecting the layer and pressing ctrl and d as you can see you now have the same layer twice and on the top one we're going to go ahead and select the bottom row and delete it and on the bottom one we're going to do the opposite and go to the top one and delete that one now what that does it basically isolates your text layer and you now have an individual text layer for each row which is going to be important because we want them to move in a different direction so we're now going to select the top layer press p to bring up the positioning properties right click on it and select separate dimensions now just click the little stopwatch next to it and it should create two keyframes go a few frames ahead and move the y value to the top so that the word in the center is fully visible now do the same thing for the bottom word so we're going to select the bottom layer press p separate the dimensions go to the start where we set the other keyframes put them right here and then go to the end where you want our animation to be finished and increase the y value so it's fully visible. Thank you.
Now I'm gonna go ahead, select both the layers and pre-compose them by pressing Ctrl and C. Select the bottom option and enable this check mark. Press OK. And now to add the blur, we're gonna go into our effects and presets panel and search for Gaussian blur. Drag it onto your layer. Set a keyframe a few frames before the new text layer is gonna fade up. Leave it at zero and go a bit ahead where you want your text to be fully blurred and set the blurriness up to 30. Now enable this check mark that says repeat edge pixels just in case. And from here on, we're also gonna add the fading out of the two text layers. So we're gonna press T on our keyboard to bring up the opacity fading, set a keyframe for 100 and go a bit ahead again and then put it to zero. Now also pre-compose the top layer, which you have this second word that's gonna fade up in between the lines. Now press S while selecting the layer to bring up the scale property, set a keyframe at the beginning and put it down to 50. Now go to where you want your word to be fully faded up in between the lines and set the value to 100. Now do the same thing with opacity. So we're gonna press T, go to the start, set a keyframe at zero and go to where we want our layer to be fully faded up and set it to 100. And if you now play the clip, you can see that you have this cool animation. And obviously, depending on how fast or slow you want it, you're gonna have to adjust all these keyframes. But this is just the universal way to do it, and what you need individually for your edit is gonna be decided by you. Now, why text effects are so important, and I always praise them in my videos, is because it's the first thing that your viewer is gonna see of your edit. Having a good text will leave a good impression in the viewer's head, and therefore it will lead to him viewing the edit. So if you have high quality text effects within your intro, the viewer is less likely to just swipe and look at another edit. That's why these text effects are so important and crucial. And once you start implementing them, I'm sure there's not going to be anything stopping you from becoming viral. And if you now want to have these cool text effects with blood, chrome, gold or silver, make sure to check the first thing in the description because you can still get them for a lot cheaper on my shop since there's still a huge sale going on. It's a good opportunity to boost the quality of your edits to the top and you don't want to miss it out. Also, feel free to check out my Discord server. The link's also in the description. We're a huge community of editors who just help each other all day or I can answer your questions. As well as my Instagram. I'm on there answering questions frequently. So if you have any concerns or questions, make sure to reach out on there. As always, that's it. I thank you for watching and see you next time.